Live. Hi everyone, welcome to the live handmade beauty box crafting session. I am so excited to answer your questions right now about your project, to make the project in front of you, and to go over all the things you received in your kit. So first of all, this kit is near and dear to my heart because I created all the colors, the, the blends myself, and I designed the lip balm and lipstick base for you. So first of all, all the high quality ingredients in this base. This base contains coconut oil, beeswax, sweet almond oil, and avocado oil. It's totally all natural. There are no preservatives in it. It's extremely good and gentle for your skin, excuse me, your lips, and nice and moisturizing even as the lipstick is going to provide some lovely color. In your kit you also receive five droppers and these are extremely helpful for filling up your 24 lipstick tubes. That's right, you got 24 lipstick tubes this month. And I don't know about you, but $30 for making 24 lipsticks, that's a pretty economical price for each lipstick. Finally, your Lip Safe colorants. And there's four colorants here, very generous sizing, so that way you can mix and match and design any sort of colorant you want. You'll notice you end up using a fair amount of colorant to get a color that actually sticks out on your lips, but it's well worth it. You can always use less if you want a slightly more sheer color. Just a note about colorants. These are LipSafe approved colorants. If you're thinking about uh, trying to craft these products at home from, say, scratch, make sure you're only using LipSafe colorants. So like don't melt down crayons, for example, and put those on your lips in your lipstick. Uh, and if you wanted to, say you're all done with your four ounces of base and you're like, I really want to get to the next level and I want to try making this from scratch, you absolutely can. About 50% coconut oil, 25% beeswax, and 25% sweet almond oil and avocado oil mixed up will get you pretty close to the consistency of this lipstick base. So let's get started crafting and if you have any questions, please make sure you're asking them because I would love to answer them for you live. In your small heat safe container, and notice I said small, you're going to take about half of the base and just scoop out half of the base and melt it down in the microwave. So that's about two ounces and it's a really good consistency, um, a, nice, a nice lipstick consistency with some good shine and sheen to it. Of course, I have already got some melted on camera for us, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me scoop, 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 and melt, melt, melt. So I'm going to switch over to that in just a minute. But you can see it's easy to scoop out, and it's extremely easy to melt as well. So my melted base is not in the microwave yet. My melted base is underneath. Thank you so much. And my melted base has gotten hard again. So we're actually going to be melting for about 10 seconds. At home, if you're melting your base, I want you to make sure that you're melting your full two ounces that's in here for about 30 seconds. And when it comes out of the microwave, it is hot. So make sure that you are using some sort of hot pad or something to get it out of the microwave. Don't just grab your hot melted waxes and oils and just take it out without any protective covering for your hand. I'm going to give this another 10 seconds in the microwave. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to be looking at my colorants and kind of planning what I want. Obviously, this rose pearl mica is more of kind of a pinky mica. This Cellini red is really much more of a vibrant color, and it's actually a really good one for sheer colors. The brick red oxide is an all-natural colorant, and it gives a nice dark maroon color. And I'm going to do another five seconds on that. So this gives a really nice kind of vampy maroon color for lips. And then the coral mica is, well, coral colored. And it can really be used to brighten up some of the more darker tones in this brick red oxide. So pulling our out, I'm just gonna be really careful because remember it is the hot waxes and oil. And then I'm going to snip off all of my tips for these lip balm pipettes, or these lipstick pipettes, so they can transfer out easily. I also have some hot water right next to me in case I need to unclog my pipettes. And now I'm going to do just about four to five teaspoons of colorant. 
total. And I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. I go with three of the coral. One. And again, this is, this interestingly enough is a mica and it can double as, a, it, and a lot of times micas will double as blush or also eyeshadow. And so I did two and a half of the coral. And then I'm gonna go for the Cellini Red. And I'm gonna do about one and a half of the Cellini Red. Cause this is something I'd like to be able to wear every day and keep in my car. And remember, this is a fairly soft, this is a fairly soft recipe. So if you are in a really hot area and you're leaving this in your car, I can tell you it will actually melt. So keep that in mind when the hotter summer, the warmer summer months are coming up. Go ahead and add your colorant and then we just stir, stir, stir. So just take your spoon, stir, 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 and I can see this is just gorgeous. And one of the tricks that I really want to talk about that'll help save you a little bit of time is the frozen spoon trick. Um, Courtney, can you run out and get me frozen spoons? Thank you. So ahead of time, I put some spoons in the microwave and in the microwave. I put some spoons in the freezer and I froze them so that they're really, really, really cold. And then watch this nifty little trick. And you put the frozen spoon in and then the color gets hard quickly. So you can kind of just test the color on the back of your hand and make sure that that's what you want. So you can see I've got a nice kind of pinky coral color, very neutral. It's actually interestingly enough just a little bit coral for my taste so I wonder if I can darken it up with just a tinge of like a tiny tiny little bit of this brick red because the brick red really concentrated so I'm just gonna go with like mm, max an eighth of a teaspoon of this brick red and I'm going to stir that in and see where that gets us in terms of color. And now if your lip balm is getting a little hard, just like mine is, or your lipstick base is getting a little bit hard, all you need to do is just pop it back in the microwave for just about 10 seconds. So I'm gonna do that right now so I don't end up with a gloppy mess in the end. And one of the things about using oxides over micas is that they tend to be much more opaque. Micas are often more of a sheer color, whereas the oxides give so much colorant that they really are opaque and more of a matte finish. So it's a good mix to have both of them in your, in your lipsticks. So now, I'm going to make sure that the oxide is stirred in really well. I'm going to try my spoon trick again and see if I got a slightly different color this time. I can already see it's a little bit different. And that is a little bit darker red and I am really liking that color in my skin tone as opposed to this more coral. So now that I have the color I want, I take a really firm hand. So try not to have too much coffee before you do this project. And drop her in. And that's it. And then you just fill up all of your lovely tubes until you're done. And then some of you have made this project and have asked on social media and have said, hey, you know what, I am getting divots in my in my finished product at the end. Like, and by divots, I mean like little tiny sinkholes. And I've already finished all these off. I wanna be able to show you a divot. Is this one? There we go. And we're back. Hi guys, sorry about that little blip. So, right before the little blip happened, we had been talking about divots and how to get rid of divots in your lip balm. So super weird little phenomenon is every time you make a lip balm, Generally, there ends up being kind of this little divot in the top of the lip balm. And the way you get rid of it is pretty simple. You just take a heat gun and you literally, I've fixed all these. I'm trying to find one that I haven't fixed for you. Uh, and you literally just heat up the very top of the lipstick color and it remelts down into a flat, even surface. It's like magic. 
That's pretty awesome. Uh, so this works with lip balms and lipstick formulations. And right before we got cut off, there was a question about using fragrance oils and essential oils and flavor oils in lipsticks and lip balms. So to answer your question, first of all, it's a great question because some people do love to have a little bit of scent or a little bit of flavor in their lipsticks or lip balms. Some essential oils are okay to use in lip balms and lipsticks. So for example, you want to make sure that whatever you're using has been processed in a food grade or a food safe environment, which means that it actually can't use any solvents or anything when the product is being made. Because since your lipstick and your lip balm goes on your lips, there is a chance, a very small chance, but there's a chance you could ingest it. Second of all, make sure whatever the essential oil is that it's actually okay to use on lips. So a good example would be clove essential oil. Clove essential burns and numbs the lips. I don't personally like that feeling. Peppermint essential oil, on the other hand, is wonderfully cooling and kind of mentholy. So if you're using an essential oil, check to make sure it's safe and check to make sure that it is considered lip safe from the vendor and that it's been processed in a manner that makes it lip safe flavor oils and fragrance oils. So fragrance oils are not okay to use in lip-based products. They're, they're just not approved and you can't use them, sorry. However, you can use flavor oils and flavor oils are specific oils that are designed to both give your, your lip balm or lipstick some flavor and sometimes a little bit of taste and not just scent. It depends if the flavor is pre-sweetened or not. Now, a flavor oil isn't what you would find in the grocery store. Usually those baking extracts are actually mixed with water or alcohol, which makes them not suitable to mix into the oils and waxes. So make sure you're getting an oil-soluble flavor oil and also consider getting a little bit of sweetener with it. There's a few different varieties of liquid sweeteners on the market, specifically for lip balms and lipsticks, and that'll help your lip balm or lipstick taste as opposed to just smelling. Any other questions? Yeah. Do the flavors or scents discolor the lip balm? Do the flavors or scents discolor the lip balm? I have never seen a flavor or scent discolor lip balm. Um, and normally in order for a vanilla based flavor to discolor a product, there has to be water involved. And there's no water in this particular product being 100% oil and wax based. So no, that's a great question. The flavor oils do not discolor your lip balms. Can we just go over the ratios one more time to make sure we didn't miss it? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Can we go over the ratios one more time to make sure we didn't miss it? In case you want to make your own lipstick base or your own lip balm base at home, the basic kind of rule of thumb is 50% butters. And so we're talking mango butter, shea butter, or coconut oil, not cocoa butter. Even though that says butter, it's actually really hard and doesn't work in these ratios. So about 50% butter, about 25-ish percent oil, 20 to 25 ish percent uh, liquid oil. So we're talking sweet almond oil or avocado butter and then beeswax, 20 to 25 percent beeswax. And beeswax is your hardening agent. So if you're finding that your lip balm or your lipstick is just too hard, remember that frozen spoon trick. Try it if you're making the stuff at home from scratch. If you're finding that your stuff is a little bit too hard, let up on the beeswax and use a little bit more liquid oils and that should solve that. And I'm so happy that you've got the DIY beauty bug and that you want to go to the next level and not just use a pre-made base for making your next lipstick or lip balm recipe. That makes me super excited. Any other questions? Okay, I know that we did a really fun blog post and I want to share it with you. We did this really cute kind of hidden message blog post that has downloadables for you. So just go to handmadebeautybox.com, click on the blog, and then you can get these little cute downloadables. And so there are these little adorable labels that you just tape on, and then there's a little hidden message inside for someone you love. And quite frankly, since you just made 24 lipsticks, I'm betting you might give a few of them away. Uh, they're so cute. You can actually once you put them on, just put a little bit of tape on there to make it adhere or just a little bit of raffia. So I'm going to show you how to do it. This is your full download sheet. Just use these to cut. And then you have this guy here and I wrote, best day ever, because duh, it totally is. And this is the guy that I made on camera earlier. So I'm going to cap it, my custom color. And then I'm going to take a little bit of tape. And actually, before I do that, you know what I might want to do? I might actually want to label 
because you guys got some amazing labels with this particular round of this particular round of projects. So let's go ahead and label this before I put my kind of hidden message on. And I love the way this label looks. It is so clean and fresh and kind of vibrant. So here we go, we have our label on. And then I'm gonna choose the part of the label that can get taped on. I'm gonna adhere this with a little bit of tape. I'm just using a skosh of tape, not too much. Making sure it's kind of straight on there. There we go. And then you just wrap it, your little hidden message and then adhere it with a little bit of raffia and done deal. You have the perfect, sweet, and thoughtful gift. Now clean up. I bet some of you at home are like, whoa, this is the first time I've ever made anything with oils and waxes. How am I going to clean this up? So the key is lots of hot water and then wipe out your, your dishes with some paper towels. So get all that oil and wax out onto the paper towels. And then after it's out onto the paper towels, you can either use super hot water and a really great grease cutting soap like Dawn detergent. I actually, that's the one I prefer. I find that it cuts through the grease really well. And hot water and clean out your utensils and your product that way. Or if you are a soaper or you have a little bit of soap left over from our very, very first project, that wonderful loofah soap that we made the very first month, you can actually melt down a little bit of the, the melt and pour soap in the microwave and put it in your oily containers. Mix that oil and the waxes around it with the soap, pour that into a mold, and then you have a very emollient, very moisturizing, extra moisture your soap and you know what your dishes are pretty much clean so those are the two ways that I like to clean up my product my dishes when I'm done do not put oily waxy dishes in your dishwasher you will be super sad if you do that because as great as modern conveniences of dishwashers are oils and waxes are a real trial for them so do the hot water oil cutting Dawn, um, make sure you have fully wiped out your container even before it's hitting the sink because I don't want any of those waxes and oils really in large amounts to be going down your drains. So before we have, do we have any other questions before I sign off? Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching Handmade Beauty Box and sticking through with us as we had that one technical glitch. I can't wait until next month because we have a wonderful from scratch do-it-yourself beauty project that I think is gonna excite and intrigue you. And make sure you're watching your newsletters and the blog posts to get any sort of updates because, you know, we can't really keep a secret perfectly and we may drop a couple hints. And I can't wait to see all of your creations I want to see your little lipstick soldiers lined up in a row and I want to see your photos on Instagram and on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Make sure to hashtag it HBB show and tell and I can't wait to see what you create. Until next month, happy crafting guys.